there everybody, Almighty Zen Taco here. Thank you for checking out this video, but before we get to the tutorial, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a new game coming out on Steam on May 3rd. Into the Under Dusk, a dark pixel art metroidvania with brutal precision platforming elements. If you'd like to support me and my work, please head on over to the store page, which is linked below, and wishlist it. Maybe even buy a copy when it comes out. Alright, without further ado, on to the video. So, today's video is about coyote time. This is something, if implemented correctly, will drastically improve the overall feel and playability of your platformer games. But what exactly is coyote time? Uh, I might be showing my age here, but you know how Wily Coyote will run straight off a cliff, hover in place for a few seconds until he realizes he's made a fatal error, then plummet to his doom? Well that is Coyote Time. Essentially, we will be adding a grace period to your jumps so that if a player walks off an edge, he has a tiny window where, uh, even though there is no ground beneath the player, he can still perform a jump. This removes those instances where the player may feel cheated. We as developers know the player didn't actually make the jump, but we also know that players are fickle creatures who will probably delete your game as soon as they feel cheated. Sometimes we have to hold their hands a little bit and treat them with kid gloves. Keep in mind this tutorial is for Game Maker Studio 2. Alright, let's boot up our IDE and get straight to work. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example of how this is going to look once we have finished it. This is Into the Under Dusk, and this is the Skeletal Ruins, a pretty hard part of the game. Uh, so if you look here, we can walk off the edge and still press jump to implement a jump and save our lives. So we just press the key after we fall. And if, if you notice, there actually is quite a lot of a grace period here, and that's because this game is pretty hard. So I felt like people maybe needed a little more leeway than I would give in maybe a different type of platformer. So, uh, all right, with that being shown, let's go ahead and build this from scratch. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes, and I have rigged up a simple little platformer. This is just a little blue guy who walks around the screen and can jump. Let's take a quick look. All right, pretty simple. So he can walk around left and right, he falls, he can jump, he cannot jump in air. There is no coyote time. As soon as he falls off the edge, if you press jump, he will just continue falling. Kind of like the way this guy just hobbles around. Whoop, 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 whoop. This guy has a lot of personality. Maybe we'll give him his own game. <coughs> All right, so let's take a look at the code and see how we're gonna implement some coyote time here. This is our player object. As you can see, he has two variables, x speed and y speed, which are set to zero at start. I have some uh, functions here, which you use to actually run the program, uh, which are called in the step event. So this is gonna help us to organize our code a bit, a bit and make it a little simpler to understand. We have the animate function, which just controls which sprite is currently being drawn which animation for the character at any given time we don't really need to mess with that that's not really relevant that's just there to make this look a little better move left and right merely sets the x speed based on the keyboard check left and right movements so we're going to pull the keyboard check for the left and right movement and set the x speed accordingly this does mean that in this example the uh, player does not have any decay he stops moving instantly left and right when you let go of the keyboard but that's totally fine for this example the next function on the list is the collide function as we see right here this is a really basic function which pretty much anyone who uses game maker knows uh, this is sean spaulding's famous collide script I went ahead and added a OBJ argument that gets passed in. We're gonna check along the X and Y axis for this OBJ. In this case, uh, we are gonna actually pass in the OBJ block. That's our block object, which I have created over here. If you look right here, these are blocks. This is what we're checking for the collision with the player. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. Just wanna show you that it is there and I am using Sean Spaulding's collision script. But uh, other than that, this is not going to be relevant to our tutorial either. 
So the jump function is really where all the magic is going to happen. So our little jump function will be constantly updating the y speed, adding 0.1 to it. This is essentially gravity. Now what we're doing right now is we are checking for a keyboard press and also if the player is on the ground. So we determine if the player is on the ground by using place meeting. Place meeting can check a position somewhere in the room for an object that you pass in here. In this case, the block. We are checking to see if that object is at the X and Y position of the player, but on the Y plus one, meaning right below the player. So if we were to take the player object, leaving him where he was on the X axis, but moving him down one pixel, if we're making contact with a block, then this is true. So what this line is saying is, did you press the space key? If the space key was pressed and the player is essentially on the ground, well, then we're going to start our jump. And all we do there is turn Y speed to negative four and then play a sound. Lastly, we have a update position function. All this is gonna do is take the X position and add X speed to it, take the Y position and add Y speed to it. So it actually does matter what order we call these functions in. Animate can be pretty much anywhere. So we want to uh, make sure we call the jump and the move left and right functions before the collision function. And uh, lastly, update position. After everything is done, we're gonna be updating the position. So that's it. It's a very simple and very basic platformer. So the idea behind Coyote Time is actually really simple. What we need to do is check to see if the player is on ground. If the player is not on ground, we just simply need to allow a brief period where we will still accept a key press and allow a jump. So for example, you know, this would be on ground. This is not on ground. So we are going to actually write a little function to help us with this. So it's a little easier to uh, kind of visualize it and see what's happening. So in the create event, we are going to write the word function. That's how you declare a function in Game Maker. And we're gonna call this on ground. Right now, we're not gonna use any arguments. Now, all we're gonna do is use the place meeting function. Now, this is a built-in Game Maker function. We're gonna say if place meeting x y plus one obj block if that is true we are going to return true else we will return false so this function simply uh, runs the built-in function place meeting it checks for a collision with the block object at x y plus one if there is a collision it will return true else it will return false now we're gonna expand this a little bit because I mean in, in your game or in many games, there might be a lot of objects that could be considered ground. So let's go ahead and pass in an argument, obj, and we'll replace object block with obj. Now when we call this, we're gonna to have to write in an object, but this will allow us to essentially use on ground to check against multiple things, not just the block object. But in this game, we just have a block object. Now let's test this to make sure it works. So we're gonna go to the step event and do a show debug message so that we will write something to the debugger. And we're going to check on ground and pass in obj block. Now in Game Maker Studio, uh, it will show false as zero and true as one. So if we see a zero, we're not on ground. If we see a one, we are on ground. If that shows up in our debugger console, then we know we did this correctly. Let's give it a shot. All right, as you can see, it appears to be working. If we look in the debug console, we see a one and we are in fact on the ground. If I press jump, it immediately goes to zero. So that's true as well. So that is when we're off ground. Uh, so that's correct. That should be a zero when we're off ground and one when we're on ground. When we fall off the edge, it's also a zero. So we know that we did this correctly and uh, our on ground function is, well, functional. Okay, so now that we've written our on ground function, uh, we just need to actually implement this whole setup with Coyote Time. So remember, what we're trying to do is uh, set up a grace window so that when you are have fallen off the ground or are no longer on the ground, there is a tiny grace period in which you can still press the button. So we need to set up a variable to sort of keep track of how long we've been off of the ground. And we're gonna just call that Coyote Time. 
we'll set that to zero at first. Now we also need a max value for what to refresh Coyote time to. So how long is that window to check for that button press? We're gonna call that Coyote time max. And I'm gonna make that something really high like 30. Now I wouldn't recommend you making it that high. We're just doing that so it's easy to test. Uh, keep in mind that this is going to be cycles. That's 30 cycles of the program. So it will not be uh, frame independent. You could set it up with delta time if you wanted to. That would just be more complex and we're not going to do that here. So it should be fine for what we're trying to do. We're gonna create another function to control coyote time and I'm gonna call that coyote time. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that coyote time the variable is always being pulled down to zero. So if it's not zero, subtract from it. So if coyote time is greater than zero, coyote time minus minus. Let's go ahead and wrap this in a parentheses so it's a little more readable. GameMaker does not really care, but this is gonna make it a little easier for people who are reading your code to understand what's happening. So we're always bringing coyote time down. Now, we, the next thing we wanna do is refresh the value of coyote time if you are on the ground. So if on ground, and our ground for this case was the OBJ block. So if we're on the ground, we are going to set the value of coyote time to equal coyote time max. And that's pretty much all we need to do for coyote time. Uh, let's go ahead and add that to our step event. I'll put it right here before jump coyote time. Uh, lastly, what we need to do is change the way the jump function works. So right now we are checking for a key press, in this case space, and then we're also checking if the player is on the ground. We're, we don't care if the player is on the ground anymore. Instead, we care, is, we care if the player is within that grace period. And we know they're in that grace period if coyote time is greater than zero, because coyote time is when we're on the ground, it's full, it's at full value, in this case 30. When we're off the ground, it starts counting down one per cycle. When it hits zero, we're no longer at that grace period. So here's how we're gonna check for that. If keyboard check pressed VK space and coyote time is greater than zero, then we will do our jump. Let's go ahead and give this a quick test and see if it worked. So when I fall off the edge, I can still jump when I'm in the air. So we know it works. Now there is a bit of a problem. If you notice there, I can actually do a bit of a double jump. So let's look into why that's happening and how we can fix it. So the way to fix that double jump is we need to make sure that whenever you actually implement your jump, that coyote time is immediately set to zero. Otherwise you can, as long as coyote time is greater than zero, you could just keep jumping infinitely. So we wanna make sure that as soon as a jump is initiated, coyote time is now zero. And I can no longer double jump. But man, I can jump long after I fall off the edge. So um, that value is a little high. We're gonna tweak that real quick, but this is pretty much done. This is coyote time. So now our player has a bit of a grace period so that if he falls off the edge, uh, he can still he can still jump. I would recommend something much smaller though. Maybe perhaps 10, 10 frames instead of 30. Even that might be a bit high, but it's gonna be way better than 30. 30 is a bit obnoxious. Yeah, so 10 is much better. Uh, 10 would be better than 30. 30 is pretty crazy. But there we go. So that's it, guys. That is how you implement Coyote Time in your games. It will make your platformers feel a lot better and feel a lot more fair. Um, you can play around with those values. Another thing you can do, which I think I may have mentioned, but I didn't have time to get to today, is to do input queuing. So that would mean that you can actually allow an input before you hit the ground. So let's say I press jumped now, right before I hit the ground, the game would register that. And if it was pressed within a certain window of touching the ground, then you would jump as well. And that makes it so that you don't miss any jumps. And then like, let's say, you know, you landed and tried to jump immediately and it didn't happen until you fell off an edge. That can frustrate some people. So anything you can do to kind of help the player uh, help the game do what the player intends, not what they're actually 
doing at any given time. It's going to make your game a lot more playable. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it educational. Please don't forget that I'm releasing a game on Steam called Into the Underdusk. I would love it if you would take a look at that link down below. Click it, maybe wishlist it. If you want to be a super pal, go ahead and buy it. That would be fantastic. I would love to do game development full time, though I don't expect that to be a realistic uh, um, plan of action. But if it happens, I would be more than happy to spend my life making video games. So then I can make way more tutorials. All right, well, thanks again for watching my video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.